Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to install Express and really set up our first Express web application. It's going to be a very basic application but it is going to be an app, a web application. So before we do any of that though I want to review real quickly HTTP requests and responses. Uh, whenever you go to a website, so let's go to google.com, my browser sent a GET request, GET GET, get request to Google servers. Google built me a page and then responded with that page that they built. Now the page they built is dynamic um, because it's got it's different for each person. The, the page that you get back, that I get back, will be different than the page that anybody else gets back because my page has my picture, my login information, so on and so forth. Um, so that's how that works. Google gets the request that I sent. It builds me a page and sends it back as a response. Request and response. That's a cycle that will come up over and over again. Request and response. So let's go ahead and build our application. First thing I need to do is to cd into my week 9 folder and you'll notice there's nothing in there. Um, so we're going to touch app.js. We're going to make a new file. Remember touch creates a new file. And I have this app.js right here. So this is where I'm going to put all my code. So after I have created app.js, I need to install the express package from npm. So to do that, npm install express. And one thing you can do is if you don't want to type out the whole word install, you can just do i and it works just fine, npm i express, and it'll take it a few seconds to download and install the express framework. All right, express has finished installing. You'll notice I have a new node modules folder up here and a package lock.json. So now that express is done, we have to import it into our app and start using it. So if you remember from previous videos when we we're installing npm packages and importing them, it's relatively straightforward. We're going to call this one express, const express equals require, and then you put the name of the package as a string inside of there. So we are importing Express. Now Express is special. It's different than the vast majority of other frameworks and applications, so it requires a little bit more, a um, little bit more setup, a little more boilerplate. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another constant. constant. I'm going to call this app. That's the convention. You don't have to call it app, but almost everybody does. Const app equals Express called as a function. What this does is this first one imports Express from the package. The second one sets up a new constant called that we called app, which is the result of calling Express as a function. So this app is all it is is just an object, and that is returned from calling Express as a function. But there's a ton of stuff on there. All of the Express functionality is now loaded onto this app constant, and everything we do with Express, we're going to be doing with this app. So the next step we need to do is create some routes. And if you'll remember, routes are parts of your URL. So let's give you an example of my website. That's The root of my website, the root route, is just www.mrbastine.com. However, I also have other routes. So let's come down here to the portfolio. So now I have, this is root, and now I have slash portfolio. So this is called the slash portfolio route. Um, we can do meal app. Now I have mrbastine.com slash meal app, and you'll notice it also has slash recipes. And we can go even further. Click on one of these. Now we have root slash meal app slash recipes slash ID. This is a this is the ID of this particular meal. But so we have all these different routes. Each one of these is a different route, and there are sub routes inside of each other. So now we're going to define a few routes. Let's define the root route. We're also going to define a login route, and that's going to be slash login. And we're also going to define a slash sing route, just because. And these are just arbitrary. I'm just making these up. Now, this syntax for creating a, a route in Express is going to be a little bit confusing at first. So instead of trying to explain it right off the bat, I'm going to type it all out for all three of these, let you see them and see how they compare to each other, and then I'm going to go back over it piece by piece and explain each piece of it. So if you don't immediately understand this, don't worry. We're going to explain it and you're going to work with it and you're going to get it. All right, I have now created three different routes. And let's look at each one individually. You'll notice that all of them start with app. As I said, everything we do at Express is going to be based off of this app. There are going to be methods on this app um, object. So app and then dot get. You'll just notice that each, all three of these 
do app.get. That is the method. That is the, the method that it's listening for. You also later will have app.post. You'll have app.delete. You'll have app.put. All that kind of stuff. But for right now, we're only making git requests. So what this is going to do is it's setting up a route for git. And then the next thing is the, UR, is the route, the URL. So you'll notice this one is root. This one is slash login. This one is slash sing. So if I were going to do this, it might be root slash login or root slash sing or just root. So if I was going to do this on Google, it would be www.google.com is the root, then slash login would be the login route, then slash sing would be the sing route. So that's what goes there. The second argument inside of that app.get method is a callback function. This is what's going to be done whenever a user visits that route. So if a user visits the root, it will call this function and do whatever is inside that function. These callback functions both have request and response. Now you could write request and response if you would like, but um, most people don't do that. Most people just do REQ and RES because it's shorter and easy to, easier to work with. Um, that's kind of the convention that you'll see. But again, these are just arguments in a function, so you theoretically could call them anything you wanted. Now, this first one is request. This is going to be an object that has all of the properties from the request on it. It's going to have the method. It's going to have the headers. It's going to have any query data that's passed. It's going to have all the information about that request. And this is the response, and it's going to have all the information about the response. We can add to this, we can build on, on the response, we do all kinds of stuff, but this is the response. And then inside of that function, we are going to we are using the response object to send some data. All this does is send this raw data. It's just going to send a string back. It's not going to send HTML or any of that. We're not there yet. It's just going to send this raw data. So we have one more thing we have to do before we can actually start making requests to this is we have to tell our app to listen, to listen for requests. To do that, you have to do this at the bottom below your route dec declarations, app.listen, and this takes two parameters. It takes a port and it takes a callback function. The port can be pretty much anything you want. 3000 is the, is the most common, and I recommend you go with 3000 for now. Um, I wouldn't worry about trying to change this until much later, until you understand more about ports and network routing and things like that. So just stick with 3000 for now is my suggestion. And then the second is a callback function. This function does not take any parameters. And you honestly, you don't have to have this function. It's just highly recommended because that way you can um, test and make sure it's actually listening. So I just like to console.log app is running, whatever. And what's going to happen is whenever we start this, whenever we do um, node app.js, it's going to run all this, and then it's going to sit here and listen. And one more step to do this, and this is only because we're using Gurm IDE. You don't have to do this if you're running this locally. But to, for Gurm IDE, we have to come up to Project, Running URL and Port, and you should have one, a registered URL and port, already there. It's, it should create this automatically. Every once in a while, though, it has a kind of a bug in it, and it doesn't create one. So to create one, you just come up here where it says URL and port. Type in whatever you would like here. Type in your port right here, and then hit register. Now, this is not going to work for me because I already have port 3000 taken, um, but just keep that in mind. I highly recommend you use port 3000, but if you don't, if you use port 2000, then... You just have to make sure that the number you put here, the port you put here, matches the port that you're going to have there. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, because this is just a URL. I'm just going to copy that, paste it up here in our new tab, and it's not going to work. Yeah, connection refused because I'm not running. I'm not listening yet. I'm not running my stuff. But if I do node app.js, I didn't save it, so I need to save that. And now do node app.js app is running. Notice how this helped me out. Because this didn't log to the console, I knew something was wrong. I could have tried come in here and said connection refused and, and, and I would have had problems because like, what in the world's happening? I, I would have had to figure out why it wasn't working right. But because I put this in there, I immediately knew, hey, this never ran, so it's probably because I didn't save it. So you can see down here, app is running, and I don't have a cursor. I don't have a prompt to do more because this is listening. 
And now if I refresh this page, I hit the root route. I hit this right here. And if I go to slash login, I hit the login page, the login page here. And if I go to slash sing, we should see we're no strangers to love. Slash sing, we're no strangers to love. Yep, so all those routes are working. If I go to a random string, it'll say connection. You can't get it. There, I haven't set up a route for that, so it doesn't work. But one more thing I wanted to show you is that we can also use Postman to do this. So it it's, works the exact same as what we're used to. So let's make a new request. And we're going to get that route. Send. And we got back I am root. And if I send it to login, we got the login page here. So it's the exact same as we're used to. It's the same thing that we're used to. In this video, we installed Express using NPM, we imported Express into our application and then called it as a function. We saved it to the app constant, and this, this, this name is arbitrary, we can name it anything we want. However, app is the convention, and I highly recommend you use that because that's the one you'll see 99% of the time. We set up three different routes that people can go to on our application, and then we told our app to listen. It's listening on port 3000, which we set up in our project uh, running URL and port. And then we also had a callback so that whenever we start our server, it will log that callback out to let us see. Each of these routes follows the same format. It has app dot the get method. And as I mentioned before, you could have other methods. You could have delete or post or put or whatever. That takes two parameters. The first parameter is the relative URL starting with the root slash means the root, so whatever your whatever your domain is, it's the root. So for Mr. Bastine, it would be that would be the root for the Argumar Gorm IDE, that's my root. And then the second argument is a callback function that will be run whenever somebody hits this. Whenever somebody makes a, a request to that route, this callback function is run. That callback function takes two arguments. There can be more. There are times that we will add more arguments in here, but it has to have at least two, request and response. And we are response.send, which is a method on response. The, all that does is that just sends some raw data. We will later on have this um, response.render, which is going to render some templates and send some actual HTML. We're going to do some other cool stuff with it. But for now, we just wanted to kind of get it set up and, sh and show you the basics of routing within Express. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.